Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at West of Dead on the Nintendo Switch. With this one, you are a walking dead man that's faced by Ron Perlman, the absolute legend, and you're killing everyone in sight, so I was pretty much sold immediately. So with that luck, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family, and let's get started. So story and you're going to be jumping into the boots of dead man William Mason and just to reinforce the most important point about all of this William is Ron Perlman. Finding yourself like all kinds of dead though and you appear to have a fever as well considering your school's on fire you've kind of got like a grudge to settle and you'll find yourself in purgatory Wyoming 1888. Here you'll be tasked with tackling this world of like witches and all sorts of evil. Well I will say it is minimal on the story front just to kind of kick things off. West of Dead it does a good job of building intrigue and as you're working through it's like four chapters it's gonna like drip feed you just enough to keep you locked in. All along as well I gotta say it's got this pretty badass attitude that comes with the territory of playing a gun welding dead man. It's good stuff overall and it comes at you with like two waves. One William's past and kind of you know telling you about that character and then two just the world and this creepy place that's like surrounding you. It's a gameplay then and it's a really interesting idea, a roguelike that's mixed then with twin stick shooting that implements cover based mechanics and it's all to I've got to say great effect. Here's the idea though, awake in purgatory, work your way through levels, kill absolutely everyone in sight or well, nearly everyone and then find a portal somewhere in the level that kind of advances you forward. As you go these kills that you get will reward you in two things, iron and occasionally sins. Iron is the currency of this world, you'll be using that to purchase upgrades and weapons from a merchant that you can find in each level. Since then you'll trade these with a witch that's like in the hub world between each level where you can craft permanent upgrades as well as replenish your health. These upgrades from the witch they come in a variety of sizes, think unlocking a new weapon. You won't start with it, it's roguelike after all but you might find it then on your next run. Or how about an upgraded special skill like think throwable dynamite. Likewise then there is a couple that take a permanent effect, the most important I think a health bottle that comes in a variety of sizes and I will give you the warning now you want to upgrade this as quickly as possible. With that said you probably gathered by now you're going to die and you're going to die a whole lot then it's all the way back to the beginning and you'll be restarting the run, collecting sins, trading with the witch, dying and repeating. It's no doubt not for everyone that formula so if the idea of like trying over and over again isn't for you I'm going to tell you now do not buy this game. The most interesting mechanic here though for me it was the pickups I found scattered throughout the world. Not only will you find the usual like weapons or control in a slightly different way like a 5 bullet gun with extra damage on its last bullet or a rifle where the longer you hold the trigger the more accurate you'll be but then think like along the lines of health pickups, special abilities and upgrades for that particular run like so you can choose between an increase to what enemies drop, a health boost and a strength boost. Understanding your goal of the, uh, the run you're in at that moment and matching these skills to it are by far the most important thing you will learn while playing. Let's say you just want to kill everybody in sight and try and get as far as possible, you want to focus on probably strength with a little bit donated towards the health. I really had a great time though and that's thanks really down to the controls, they're just so smooth whether it's like dashing and diving with a tap of the A button, the twin stick shooting that feels really tight or simply the cover base moments and that's actually automatic, you will stick to these walls on its own and it really did very rarely make any mistakes. It also just captures that feeling of I'm an utter badass. Then the enemies in the game they ramp just at like I'd say the right speed with a variety of different skills from those that literally explode to gun welding like cowboys to what appears to be the walking dead and that makes sense it is purgatory after all. Boss battles then top all of this off and they are I've got to say especially epic. As you progress then you'll even get access to portals the circles you see on the ground. These you can use them not only to transport your way around the map if you want to move quicker but you can also use them to jump forward like two, three, four levels though I will say every time I did this I got my ass kicked because I wasn't leveled up enough. The only issues on the gameplay front honestly the random loadout of guns at the beginning of each run with the sin upgrades felt a little unoptimized in the sense I already knew if I had a, like a good chance of surviving from this very first moment I wish there was a little bit more consistency across like this range of guns. Then it's a locked camera it occasionally would find itself for that reason stuck in less than ideal positions or caught on the environment. Wasn't frequent but it was frustrating when it allowed an enemy to land a hit on me that I felt I had no control over. 
Overall, though, I've got to say, these couple of minor issues aside, it's an incredibly challenging game, but it really also captures that swagger it sets out to, and the blending of twin-stick shooting and cover-based attacks made it not only feel fresh, but kept me coming back for one more go. The graphics then and I loved it, uh, capturing like a cartoon style shading that few games master. The enemies, the world, it's all presented without ever giving up on this idea. And I gotta say, it kinda nails it. For some, I think the dark imagery will put you off. And when I say dark, I mean it's just like very like dimly lit. It's a game that's based on the idea of light being a weapon, you'll find lanterns you can light to not only stun enemies, but give you more visibility on what's happening around you. I will say I see this as an intentional design, but that second chapter, it's gonna be a real challenge for you to get used to because at first I could barely see anything. Likewise, handout, I did find that a little difficult. I had to turn off like all the lights in the house to really have a, a good shot at it and feel confident in what I was doing. Then problems wise on the graphical front outside of that, I did notice the occasional like pixelation that was like flashing like a tear in the world, drawing just cutscenes, and the design can lead to some like weird occasional glitches. A lot of the time you're gonna be moving down corridors between rooms and they, these walls they go see-through, but two things happen, you lose track at times of where the next doorway is because it's all see-through and then they also pop up occasionally blocking what you can see. Fortunately though, these corridors are just that, corridors, there's no enemies here, they're just simply links between the rooms that make for almost like arena moments of combat or that occasional amazing boss fight. Audio then and Ron Perlman, his voice acting pitch perfect, but it does highlight an issue, a lack of any other real voice actors, they're all pretty much relegated to only text. I think this would have benefited from some like more voice actors around him just so he could work off of them. Then the music, decent enough, it captures that spirit of like the 1889 setting, you know, I think like a very Americana vibe, but it also has like a little bit of unsettling tonality just in the background to add that creep factor. Finally, weapons and great stuff, they sound powerful and they sound varied, and when I took my shots, it always sounded as powerful as it like should have, which is really all I can ask for. Overall, audio is solid, but I will say I wish they never just left the heavy lifting just to Ron Perlman himself, though I can't imagine he came cheap for what is, you've got to remember, an indie experience. So overall, you're gonna spend about 10 hours with this one, beating it for the first time, and it's gonna throw some serious challenge your way. Not only is it about learning your enemy types and their attack patterns, but balancing your weapon choices, your upgrades, and also working out what's gonna be like the optimal path to take once portals become available. Yes, it has some issues from the occasional glitchy camera to the levels and chapters that can descend a little too heavily into like, pitch black. That said though the story was the backbone the visuals needed, the gameplay fast and varied and then yeah this is one I've personally been excited about for a long time and I can't say I was disappointed. I just hope they do get to work on a patch to fix a few of these issues I faced. Today I'm going to be giving West of Dead a 7 out of 10 for the right player they will absolutely love it like me but it's not without its flaws and I want to be transparent about that. Also, gotta say, don't like roguelikes, do not come here. This is not the game for you. Thanks for watching. Is this one you're going to be picking up and adding to your collection? I personally hope we see a physical release. Then a shout out to the patrons of the channel for going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. Helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Finally, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone.